In Activity 6, the acid test, students perform an acid test on the mineral specimens. They first infer that the acid test is useful for identifying certain minerals, and then use the results of all four tests to identify each mineral specimen. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 3 through 5, Activity Sheet 6, Mineral Data Sheet, Glass Plates, Mineral Specimens 1 through 10, and Magnifiers in Storage Containers from Activity 5, Steel Nails, Vinegar, and the Rock Guide. You will also need to provide safety goggles, newspapers, and paper towels. To prepare for Session 1, make a copy of Activity Sheet 6 and the Mineral Data Sheet for each student. Make sure to have the Rock Guide on hand for reference. Add a bottle of vinegar, two glass plates, and two nails to the mineral specimens and magnifiers in each storage container. Each student will need a pair of safety goggles, and each group of four students will also need a storage container of materials, newspaper, and three paper towels. To begin session one, ask students, how might some minerals react to common chemicals? Allow time for a variety of responses, and then tell students that in this activity, they will test minerals with vinegar, a mild acid, to see how they react. Demonstrate for the class the procedure for the acid test. Be sure to choose a specimen that is soft enough to scratch. Use a nail to scratch a small amount of mineral powder onto a glass plate, and then place a drop of vinegar on the powder. Finally, use a magnifier to observe any reaction. Next, divide the class into groups of four and instruct groups to cover work areas with newspaper. Make sure that students wear safety goggles during this activity. Distribute Activity Sheet 6 to each student and a container of materials to each group. Then, instruct students to perform the acid test on each mineral specimen as demonstrated. For those specimens that are too hard to scratch with a nail, you should place drops of vinegar directly on them. After students have completed their tests, use paper towels to wipe off any vinegar on those specimens and remind students to wash their hands. Next, have students record their observations on Activity Sheet 6 and lead the class in discussion of their test results. Remind students that rocks are made up of minerals. Ask students, is the acid test a good way to check for the presence of specimen 4 or 5 in a rock? Students should have observed that when drops of vinegar were placed on specimen 4, tiny bubbles appeared in the vinegar, indicating that a chemical reaction was taking place. They should have also noticed that when vinegar was placed on specimen 5, the specimen began to dissolve. It stands to reason that the acid test is a good way to check for the presence of specimen 4 or 5 in a rock because any rock that contains these two minerals will have similar reactions to the vinegar. To begin session 2, distribute a copy of the mineral data sheet to each student and explain that this sheet contains specific data about each one of their mineral specimens. Then have students retrieve their copies of activity sheets 3 through 5. Explain to the class that geologists often need to use the results from more than one test to identify a mineral. Similarly, by comparing the information on the mineral data sheet with the data they have recorded from the luster, hardness, streak, and acid tests, students should be able to identify all 10 mineral specimens. Instruct students to record the name of each mineral next to the appropriate specimen number on activity sheets 3 through 6. Then have them record the specimen number next to the name of each mineral on their mineral data sheets. After students have identified the specimens, discuss with the class the specific identifying properties of the mineral, and then list the minerals. Quartz, feldspar, mica, calcite, halite, talc, galena, pyrite, copper sulfide, and sulfur. Next, have each team compare the Mohs number that they assigned on Activity Sheet 4 to the actual Mohs number on the mineral data sheet. Ask students, were your scratch test results accurate? Students should not erase any answers that are incorrect. Instead, have them cross out any incorrect information and write in the correct information. Encourage students to learn from their mistakes rather than erase evidence of them. Tell students to continue adding examples to their lists of the different ways that rocks and minerals are used today and how they have been used in the past. Ask students, why is it important to know what a mineral's reaction to acids might be when choosing materials for buildings, statues, and monuments? 
elicit from the class that if a certain mineral dissolved in vinegar, it would not be a good idea to use that mineral in the construction of buildings where acid rain or precipitation containing acid chemicals is common. Encourage other such explanations. To conclude the activity, have the students cap the bottles of vinegar securely and return them to the kit. Rinse the mineral specimens thoroughly to remove all traces of vinegar. The mineral specimens and magnifiers should be placed back in the storage containers for use in Activity 7. Finally, discard any soiled newspaper and save the rest for use in Activity 8. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.